There are two major sources of uncertainty in projecting future climate. The first factor is the magnitude and rate of global emissions of heat-trapping gases and particles that affect the energy balance of the Earth. This is largely determined by the rate at which human activities, such as the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation, continue. The second factor is climate sensitivity, or how the climate will respond to the accumulation of these climate change pollutants in the atmosphere. Let's explore each of these factors in turn. First, global emissions. Teams of scientists, economists, and engineers have developed over a dozen scenarios of global emissions of climate change pollution and land use changes. The scenarios are based on different assumptions about global population growth and development patterns. For example, data of projected population growth into the future, like the data shown here, is used to gauge where humans may be emitting different types of heat-trapping gases as a result of activities from burning fossil fuels. Other information, like projections of future gross domestic product and the kinds of energy systems used, are also included. These development projections range from a lower emission scenario, which characterizes a world with high economic growth and a rapid shift toward less fossil fuel intensive industries and the introduction of clean and resource efficient technologies, where global population peaks by mid-century and then declines. In this clean development scenario, heat trapping emissions peak about mid-century and then decline. In contrast, a dirty development higher emissions scenario projects continuous population growth an uneven economic and technological development with heat trapping emissions continuing to increase throughout the 21st century and well into the 22nd. None of these development projections explicitly include climate policies, which would lower emissions for each development projection. Unfortunately, over the last decade, average emissions have been higher than the highest. IPCC emissions projection. The good news is we have the power to change this path. We can choose to invest in clean energy technology, energy efficiency, and sustainable land practices and follow a lower emissions path for the future. However, we need to act quickly because most of the heat trapping gases remain in the atmosphere for many decades to many centuries. As a result, the actions we take today will determine the climate that our children and many subsequent generations will inherit from us. If only we had moved in this direction decades ago, when this problem was first publicly pointed out, we would be well on the way to cost-effective pathways to solving climate change. However, at this point we need to take aggressive action immediately. Only with such actions can we dramatically reduce the risk of the most severe impacts of climate change that we're building into our future? Now let's turn to the second major factor influencing future climate, climate sensitivity. Climate sensitivity is the extent to which temperatures will rise as a result of increasing concentrations of heat trapping gases in the atmosphere. In contrast to the global emissions path, we have virtually no control over climate sensitivity. Climate sensitivity depends on the Earth's response to certain physical processes, including a number of so-called feedbacks that might amplify or lessen warming. For example, snow and ice today cover about 10 to 20 percent of the Earth, varying by season, which reflects about 80 percent of the incoming solar radiation back to space, as temperatures rise, snow and ice across the globe are disappearing. As a result, 
less radiation is being reflected back to space and more heat is being absorbed, leading to further heating of the Earth's surface. This is a positive feedback. Another feedback that is less well understood is what will happen to atmospheric water vapor as warming continues. As temperatures rise, the atmosphere can hold more water vapor, which traps heat and raises temperature further. Clouds created by this water vapor could absorb and re-radiate outgoing infrared radiation from the Earth's surface. Yet another positive feedback. Or clouds could reflect more incoming shortwave radiation from the sun before it reaches the Earth's surface, which is a negative feedback. The net effect, unfortunately, is still controversial as clouds cannot be measured precisely enough to resolve the uncertainties. Many of these processes and their feedbacks are not yet fully understood. As a result, there is a wide range in our estimate of climate sensitivity. As our understanding of these feedbacks increases, we may be able to better project future climate. What is unsettling, however, is that so far as the science has improved, we have learned that the climate is even more sensitive to atmospheric accumulation of heat trapping gases than originally expected, which means the risks we face are greater and the time we have to address them is shorter. Under a lower emission scenario, we can expect to see at minimum on the order of 1 to 2 degrees Celsius additional rise in global temperature by the end of the century. However, under a scenario where global emissions continue to grow, global temperatures are projected to rise as much as 4 to 6 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, risking many potential irreversible and catastrophic impacts. This wide range of possible climate futures makes planning for the future difficult. However, from these climate change projections, two clear messages still emerge. First, we can avoid the most severe impacts of climate change by acting quickly and aggressively to reduce our emissions of heat trapping gases through investments in energy efficiency, renewable energy, and forest protection today. Second, even with aggressive emissions reductions that we would get under a lower emissions scenarios, some continued climate change is still inevitable. We must act now to help prepare people and, where feasible, prepare threatened species for these changes that we will not be able to avoid even with aggressive mitigation actions.